Let's take a look at JSP custom tags. What is a custom tag? The JSP specification defines a few built-in tags which we've used in the primary development of basic JSPs. Uh, these tags such as use bean, set property, we've worked with these tags. In addition, you can also write your own custom tags. For example, in your application, for your JSP developers, you could define a tag called, let's say, address book and uh, specify that so that your you, JSP developers can render all the addresses from an address book with the use of a simple tag in a syntax that they expect to be able to use. Custom tags can encapsulate a lot of display rendering logic and speed up the view layer development because the view layer developers are generally writing JSPs and are focusing their skills on the development of JSPs in easy to use JSP syntax using, say, JSP tags. So why would you develop custom tags? Experience has shown that JSP pages which contain very little Java code, are easier to develop and easy to maintain. This latter piece is of particular significance because the look and feel of a page can be changed quickly if it doesn't contain complex Java code, which is a little more difficult to troubleshoot. We apply the following techniques already to simplify the layout and the use in the JSP source code. We use JSTL or Java Standard Tag Library tags. In many cases, these are tags are all you need to implement most common rendering logic. However, if there's no JSTL tag that does what you need it to do, or when a lot of JSTL coding is needed to get the job done, it may be time to consider your own custom tags. Most importantly, to further the reuse of our code, when the same piece of rendering logic is used repeatedly throughout a site, in other words, across multiple JSPs in the view layer of your architecture, a custom tag can speed up development. In a large application, you should be looking for ways to foster the reuse of rendering logic by creating your own custom tag and centralizing and abstracting pieces of common functionality throughout your application or throughout your architecture. What does a custom tag look like? In other words, what is the nature of a custom tag? A custom tag, just like any other tag, can have any name. We apply a namespace prefix just like we do for the use of other tag libraries in order to avoid naming collisions. For example, if we had a custom tag called address or a custom tag called shop cart and we prefixed it with MT or O, um, whatever makes sense in our application, we're now reusing a piece of code. We're referencing that code with the prefix that can be namespace scoped to avoid name collisions. We'll look at how to define namespace and prefix in detail along with other configuration as we go through. A custom tag can take attributes just like any other um, JSP tag. For example, our address tag could be defined to take an attribute called ID, and we use this just like we would any other tag uh, by supplying an attribute value with the name of the attribute. The attribute can be a simple string, a JSP expression, or a JSP EL expression. The latter option allows you to pass arbitrary Java objects or complex Java objects of any type as a value. For example, what we see here in the address tag, the use of a, a, an attribute. And I have to assume, because they've named the attribute OBJ, that the intention here is to pass a complex object instance, in this case, an object instance named ADDR, using the expression language to pass that object. Some more things to keep in mind in the nature of a custom tag. 
JSP or EL expressions are first evaluated, and then the result is passed as the value of the attribute. More advanced forms of attributes, such as fragment and dynamic attributes, we'll discuss um, a little later, but let's just focus on the simple ones right now. Some of the attributes can be configured to be mandatory, and then the JSP compiler will enforce this setting for the JSP developer, giving them a hint um, into the workings of the described tags. A tag element can have body content embedded just like other JSP and HTML tags. A tag can implicitly define a new JSP variable that could be used repeatedly within the page. For example, we see here actually the use of two custom tags, a shop cart tag and a line item tag. The line item tag in our JSP is being used as the body content of our shop cart tag. This technique can be used, as we've seen, to share data between multiple tags. If a tag is defined as embedded within a parent tag, it can dynamically locate the parent tag object and directly invoke um, tag methods or Java methods to interact with the parent tag. This is generally called private sharing. What we see here in the first example with the shop cart and the line item, this is public data sharing. So the tag shop cart is essentially creating a variable that is public, in other words, it's available elsewhere in the page, publicly available. If you're concerned about name collisions where you're using multiple tag libraries, and if the tag is embedded with a parent tag, you can scope the variable that you're looking for instead of uh, public on the page at the page scope, you can scope it by directly invoking the tag methods on the parent tag and assure that your data is privately contained within the parent tag. What is tag body? What is it we're referring to when we're talking about tag body? Any text or code between the begin tag and the end tag is what's called the body of a tag. Empty body is, just what it says, a tag that has no body or the body is empty. We've seen this with other JSP tags where the tag itself is actually a self-closing tag. You don't necessarily have an open and closed tag. So here we have a self-closing tag called an address book prefixed with MT. You also have the option to define a tag where the body is what's considered unprocessed. In other words, the tag may contain a body, but the tag doesn't process the body of the tag in any way. For example, here we see a custom tag called box with the attribute uh, BG color set to gray. And in between the opening tag and the closed tag, there's no real tag logic here. Um, we're simply using a JSP expression in this case to write out in the body of the tag, um, write out the value of price. A body may contain JSP code, may contain text, um, just as we've seen in this example. A body is considered processed if the tag processes its own body content. In other words, in this example, what we see is there's some text between the opening tag and the closing tag. And I have to assume, based on the name of these tags as a JSP developer, um, that the tag is actually going to do something uh, with the content in between the opening and closing tag. So the tag class itself will capture this body and process it in some way. I assume in this case to convert it to uppercase. The tag body could contain JSP code. The system would execute the JSP code first, and the net content of that body is then processed by the tag code itself.
you could provide iteration functionality. In other words, the tag could execute its body repeatedly depending on what the tag code is trying to do. So here we're modifying the for each loop um, where you have an opening tag and a closing tag. And based on the logic of the tag code itself, this body would actually execute repeatedly for, in this case, a collection called employee list, so for every item in the collection. As before, the tag, as we've seen before, the tag may process the body or just have the JSP engine execute it. If a tag decides to process the body, in other words, we're executing the logic um, to process the body, the JSP engine first executes all the JSP elements in the body and buffers the content. The output is then passed to the tag as body content, and the tag can then do whatever it is to need, it needs to do with the content. The final output from the tag is then sent to the browser, just as it would be with any other JSP tag. We can also supply fragment attributes. So the value of a fragment attribute is actually JSP code snippets, or a snippet. They're used by the user of the custom tag to control the rendering logic. Now keep in mind here, um, when we're talking about JSP custom tags, and there's a reference to the user of the custom tag, the user of a custom tag is the JSP developer who's using JSP tags or JSP custom tags in the development of their JSPs. Any value of a tag where we're setting a, a fragment as the attribute, we set this fragment attribute using the standard JSP attribute tag and not the usual name value option that we see with most attributes. So for example, we have here a custom tag called show price. Our show price tag would support a fragment attribute that is named sale price snippet. By using the JSP attribute tag in our JSP, we're signaling that we're going to supply a JSP fragment as the value for the attribute sale price snippet. And our custom tag show price would know how to handle this. We also have the ability to pass dynamic attributes. Dynamic attributes allows us to supply arbitrary attribute names to a tag. For example, um, order history, our custom order history tag. And here we have year one, year two, year three. And then the tag code could um, process multiple values or an unknown value to create dynamic lists or dynamic maps. A uh, dynamic attribute gives us the flexibility to supply a varying number of lists when the user of this tag is actually writing out the code. In order to define the behavior, the expected behavior of our tags, we have to create what's called a tag library descriptor. If we're talking about using custom tags, then we need to declare how our tag libraries are defined. A tag library descriptor, or as the cool people call it in the business, a TLD file, um, is actually an XML file that describes the various configuration parameters of a tag. For example, we see here a tag library descriptor. Notice the root element of this XML is tag lib, and then some various attributes for the particular specification um, that you're working with defined for the tag lib element um, to define the URI, the current version and specification from um, the W3C organization, from java.sun.com. This is to define the schema for the tag library descriptor itself as an XML document. The next thing we're interested in really um, for custom tags is defining uh, the URI element. This is where we're defining a namespace for our tags so that when the tags are used, they match this namespace that we define in the URI element. This is one of the ways we can avoid um, name collisions where we're incorporating multiple tag libraries. 
we can define a taglib version or a tlib version or a short name. This is really just documentation for the tag library descriptor that can be interrogated by many of the tools that load up uh, TLD files in uh, for display, say in outline views or configuration views. The real uh, configuration information that we're interested in as creators of tag library descriptors is what's inside the tag element. We have the name element, we have the tag, uh, tag class element, which defines a fully qualified name of the class, the Java class, that implements very specific methods within the tag interface. Notice in the body content element, we define here empty. In other words, a signal that the body content will not be processed, or it may be empty or non-existent. And then if we define an attribute, in this case, attribute 1 or ATTR1, we give it a name. We can also specify whether or not it's required so that the user of this tag, and remember the user of this tag is the JSP developer. Uh, the user of this tag, if they have a rather sophisticated JSP or XML development tool, um, and we've seen content assist in Eclipse and how it uh, once it discovers a tag, as we begin typing the uh, tag name and the opening close tag for standard tags, um, the tool upon compilation um, can notify us whether or not um, we've supplied values for attributes that are required. So this is simply a signal uh, to the compiler that the attribute, in this case ATTR1, is required. So any user of the tag with the name example within this tag library has to supply an attribute, minimally this one attribute, ATTR1. In the current JSP specification, a TLD file is not always necessary. Um, we'll look at uh, various options, but um, this used to be always required. It's now not always necessary in order to make a custom tag available to the system. The location of the TLT file varies depending on how the custom tags are packaged. In working with JSP custom tags on, uh, on projects that I've been on, we're really talking about two different job skills. We're talking about the Java developer that writes the tag implementation. And then we're talking about the user of the custom tag, which is generally the JSP developer. Now, if you're one of those people who has to wear both hats and has to have both skill sets, keep in mind that um, we're going to go back and forth between how to write the custom Java code for tag implementation, and we're going to look at uh, the samples we've looked at so far are using custom tags. So we're looking at how the JSP developer, the traditional JSP developer, would use any custom tag logic. So let's look at the Java code. If we're going to implement custom Java or uh, custom tags, what are the choices that we have? There are three possible APIs um, existing now to develop a custom tag. They vary in terms of flexibility, in terms of power, and in simplicity. In order of increasing simplicity but reduced flexibility, an overview of the options we have for implementing custom logic, custom tag logic, are here. We have the classic or legacy tag API. Prior to J2EE 1.4, and we're at Java EE 5 now, this was the only way to develop a tag, and it was um, overwhelmingly overwhelming, period. It was just overwhelming for uh, JSP developers to understand the complexity of this API. It is complex, but it does give us more flexibility and optimization techniques. In my experience, the only people who got excited about looking at this were not the JSP developers, but it was the Java developers, because they were uh, constantly writing Java code that uh, needed to support custom tags. And having a, an API, having a traditional Java API to do this made their jobs a lot easier. But for JSP developers to try and understand this, it seemed like an awful lot of work and an awful lot of complexity just for simple custom tags. 
We now have what has evolved over the years, which was introduced in J2EE 1.4, what's called the Simple Tag API. It hides the complexity of the legacy API and gives us extensions and implementations that take care of most of um, the bulk of the heavy lifting, the day-to-day -day programming um, chores that we have, making uh, the Java developer's job a lot easier. We also have the ability now to um, do away with uh, the TLD file and uh, use a JSP file to create a tag. No Java coding is required, much simpler development. We're going to concentrate on the simple tag API, again, for Java developers. And then we'll look at some of the other options as we go on. The simple tag API is simply various classes and interfaces within Java that are available from the package javax.servlet.jsp.tagext. Your custom tag is then implemented as a normal Java class, but it must implement the simple tag interface. Conveniently, most um, custom tag work would prefer, most of the developers would prefer to extend the class simple tag support, which does the uh, core implementation and the required implementation of the simple tag interface and gives us a few other features. We do get a few utility methods that help the Java developers simplify the implementation of their tag code. The simple tag interface requires the tag class, whatever our custom uh, tag class is, to implement minimally these methods. The do tag method, which is called by the container in, to ask the tag class to render the display. The set parent method or the get parent method, the containers call these methods to set and get the parent tag if the tag is defined as a child of another tag. The set JSP body method, the container calls this method to supply the body of the tag, obviously. And then there's a set JSP context method. Remember, we have to implement all of these even if we're implementing an empty uh, logic block. Uh, the JSP context object gives us the class, the access to various servlet JSP API objects that we're traditionally used to seeing, such as servlet context, such as the response stream. Additionally, the class must provide a setter for each attribute. For example, if you're um, expecting an attribute and the name is first name, we need a set first name method, and that must be present with that naming convention following traditional getter and setter naming methods. So let's look at an example for the Java developer of what a Java class would look like where the Java code is trying to support the use of a custom tag specifically the custom tag that we uh, created in our TLD file. So here's the whole Java code. Um, notice that we are creating a Java class called example tag, which extends simple tag support instead of simple tag, um, knowing that simple tag support implements simple tag as required by the API. But simple tag support gives us a couple of utility methods that can be helpful. We're using an attribute um, with our tag, in this case, a simple string attribute called attr1. So as required, we actually have a setter for that attribute, set attr1, um, and we're copying the value that's passed in in the attribute value to our string variable within the class. And then we provide, uh, this is the real heavy lifting of our tag class. We're providing an implementation of the do tag method. 
the do tag method commonly calls the superconstructor's do tag method and then begins to process the content of the tag itself or write out the tag. In our case, we're doing a simple uh, using the outrider from the JSP context. We're going to use the write method to write out some HTML, write out the value of our attribute with a label so we can interpret it, and write out the closing HTML tag. In this example, the do tag method is actually rendering the display, including the HTML. What is the life cycle of a simple tag, such as the one we just saw? When a JSP page that contains a tag is executed, the system performs lifecycle control for that custom tag. A new tag object is created each time the tag is encountered on a JSP page. The system saves the JSP context object by calling the set JSP context method of the tag object so we could in fact implement that and use it. The system calls the set parent method if this tag is defined as a child of another tag. In other words, defined in the TLD file. Next, the container calls the setter for each attribute that's supplied in the JSP file. The container then saves the body of the tag by calling the method setJSPBody. If the tag does not support a body, then a null value is supplied as a JSP fragment when setJSPBody is called. The system then calls the doTag method of our custom tag object. Once the system calls the do tag method of the tag object, the system then frees up a reference, the reference that it created to the tag object, and then the tag object is flagged to eventually be uh, collected in normal Java garbage collection to free up resources. That was quite a lot of working parts, so let's go and take a look at how to set up a basic custom tag and use it within a JSP. Let's create a custom tag in our application and use the tag in a JSP. Okay, so um, in order to create a custom tag, we're actually just creating a simple Java class that implements particular interfaces. So within my application, I'm going to right-click, choose New, and choose Class. I'm going to organize all of my uh, custom tag code into another package, and um, you know that's just best practice is to organize your code according to the functionality of your code. It facilitates reuse if people can easily discover what the intent is of the Java code contained therein. So we'll create a, a custom tag class called, let's call it custom tag. We're actually going to extend a specific superclass. So I browse to the superclass browser, and the one I'm looking for is, of course, simple tag support. Um, the one that provides us the most flexibility and implementation for developing a custom tag. Click Finish, and I've got a very basic um, Java class. No other um, necessary qualifications here. So why is it that I'm uh, creating the custom tag? I'm creating a custom tag using Java logic because that's where my skill set is. My skill set is in writing Java code. And I want to draw a write Java code that behaves like a JSP tag where the functionality that we need to extend to the view layer of our application architecture and the functionality, the business functionality that we need to extend to our JSP developers so they can focus on uh, the UI of our application and our architecture um, cannot be easily contained. What the simple tag support uh, class allows me to do is write Java code that can be encapsulated and used by the JSP developer in a similar syntax as to what they're using with other JSP tags. So to call out to the application server 
to work as a tag. Not only do I need to extend simple tag, but I need to implement a couple of methods um, according to the rules of writing custom tags. I need to implement a couple of things uh, for my code so that my uh, JSP developer can use it. And, you know, through the magic of copy and paste, I've already um, done this. Specifically, I'm interested in implementing the do tag method. That's the real body of uh, the behavior of my custom tag. So I can copy and paste this into my um, application. I've got some type uh, mismatches here that I need to resolve. So a quick control shift O uh, to resolve. Uh, imports and so you see that the tool added two additional import statements for me and I'm interested in working with a private variable called attribute custom so I want to add a private variable um, called ATTR custom I want to add that to my uh, class and I want to set a default value so that we can watch this uh, how it evolves I want to go ahead and set a default value so that the uh, attribute actually has a value when the tag is first used. The only thing my tag is going to do is write out some HTML, including the value of the current uh, private string, in this case, HTR custom. Um, just write it out. Notice we're using the JSP context object, and we're asking for a writer using the get out method and the get out method returns a JSP writer um, and we're calling the write method on the JSP writer to in fact write out to a JSP okay now in order for my JSP developer to be able to use my tag I need to create what's called a tag library descriptor or a TLD file so generally, it's the Java developer who creates the tag library descriptor file. For simple testing, you can create the file in the web INF directory of the application. We'll see other choices later, but right now, you know, I'm doing my initial testing and uh, sanity check to make sure that this is behaving the way I need it to behave. So I'm going to right click on web INF. I'm going to go to new. I'm going to choose file. And the name of my file, let's call it uh, custom.tld. And in most cases, not only by tradition and file association, but in some cases, the file extension TLD is not only um, a naming convention, but it's actually required for the application server to discover my TLD file, my tag library um, in the way that I want, I actually have to, without uh, uh, additional configuration, I actually have to give it a TLD um, file extension. If I wanted it to be something else, um, I would have to do additional configuration on the server. And as a developer, I try to avoid doing any uh, additional configuration on the server environment whenever I try to my system administrator is going to angry at me because I expect them to do the same configuration when my application is deployed, and that's not good. I have to buy them extra donuts or whatever. So, um, so we've just got a blank file. Eclipse doesn't really even know what kind of file it is. And there's some basics in the tag library descriptor, some basic elements. This is an XML type file. So I'm writing XML type elements. The main root element is tag lib. I'm giving it a short name. And notice the URI name. The URI name needs to match the tag lib directive that the JSP developer is going to uh, use in defining their tag lib directive in order to use all the many, many, many tags that I'm going to have. Well, right now I got one tag. But, um, uh, you know, as you uh, expand this and develop many tags, um, they can all be referenced in the same URI or the same namespace. The name element is simply what it says. This is the name of the tag. This is how the JSP developer is going to see it. The tag class is the fully qualified name 
of the Java class and the location, in other words, the package name of the Java class that contains the uh, heavy lifting for the business logic of what we want to do when this tag is used. So that's all we have to do. Very simple, declare our tag, override some specific methods, right? Make sure our TLD file is in the right location so that it can be automatically deployed in the application server environment without additional configuration. Now I'm going to switch to my JSP developer hat and I'm going to try and use the tag that my fellow developer has created or that I've gotten from an off-the-shelf um, application. I have a JSP that gets called from my list employees servlet. So I'm not going to make any modifications to the servlet code itself. Remember, I'm switching to my JSP developer hat. The JSP developer is already using in this JSP, they're already using a JSTL standard tag library with the taglib directive. So it would be really easy for them to copy and paste to use my taglib directive, right? They need to, or to use my tag library by changing the attributes of their taglib directive. So um, the namespace or the URI will reference the namespace that I define in the TLD. In this case, simple, what do we call it, tags? We can double check. And the tool will certainly tell me if um, it can't locate that URI or it can't resolve it. And it's giving me an error that, you know, conflicting prefixes here. So I will prefix it with, you know, my tag. This also reinforces to us that the name of the prefix is just how the tag library is referenced locally within the JSP. So we're ready to use, the JSP developer is ready to use this tag library and can now just simply type my tag. And in most cases, if the system has been refreshed, um, you notice as soon as I start typing that prefix, it actually finds the custom sample or the name of the tag automatically recognizes that it's a self-closing tag. The body is empty. There are no attributes. So it, it doesn't even try to put an additional closed tag in there for me. Okay. So what is it that I expect to happen when I run this? Now, I'm not going to run the JSP. What I'm going to do is run the servlet that calls the JSP. So just a, a quick double check in this servlet that we're actually um, using the request dispatcher and eventually calling a forward on the list underscore employees JSP. So I can run on server and we'll watch JBoss has to rebuild because we've, we've uh, added elements to the deploy environment, particularly the custom TLD file. The WebINF directory, excuse me, picks up um, anything and redeploys it. it. It picks it up as deployed artifacts or deployable artifacts. And so JBoss has picked that up. It knows that it needs to rebuild. And also my server was stopped, so the server is starting up. Now notice we have this new tag at the top and it's set to default value. If I continue to refresh, there's nothing in the logic yet that allows the JSP developer to set the value of an attribute. So the only thing that's happening right now in our tag, in the use of our tag, is when the JSP server executes this tag and writes it out, line, out in the output stream, then it evaluates, based on the TLD, it evaluates the do tag logic that we provided in our custom tag. What I would like to do is allow the JSP, what I as the Java developer would like to do, is allow the JSP developer to override this default value. In order to do that, I need to provide a setter for this attribute, okay? Um, the uh, tool itself, when it sees private variables or it sees class level variables in the outline menu, uh, from the outline menu, I can right click on, on a field or multiple fields if I do a multiple select 
and choose source and choose generate getters and setters. In traditional bean type syntax and traditional naming methods as required in the tag interface, the simple tag interface, if I'm going to work with these attributes, I need to have normally named uh, formally named getters and setters for the attributes. So the tool will stub out the code for me. When the set is executed, uh, yes, this is exactly what I want to happen. I want it to copy to the value for the class variable. And still, in my do tag method, I'm not you know, really doing anything there. Um, by all rights and rules, I should have had the getters and setters, uh, particularly the setters, uh, for the attribute in the tag interface, but it worked fine. It's just that the JSP developer is not going to be able to do much with it, okay, um, beyond just using the tag. But we're focusing our efforts on learning where, because there's so many moving parts here between the Java developer and the JSP developer, that we want to make sure that we get, you know, the pieces in place that we need to do. Now, I'm adding functionality for my JSP developer. In other words, I'm building the functionality, and this is going to be so awesome that when I package it together, it's going to be reused across all the applications in our um, company. But what I also need to do is modify the custom uh, TLD, the custom tag library descriptor, and add one line to support an attribute in my tag. Okay, and the uh, in the tag library within my tag body, I add the attribute element, and the attribute element has uh, just the name. That's it. Uh, there are other alternative elements uh, for this tag, but I'm actually adding another element here. Okay, so if I look at just to do again a sanity check, I see that attribute is nested within the tag itself. So I'm actually defining an attribute named attr custom um, tied as a child element of the main tag element, which is good. So now when um, the JSP developer goes to use my tag. Notice I didn't specify that the attribute was required. And so if the developer makes changes and saves it, there's going to be no compile error. But if they choose to set the attribute value, the system should pick up now. If I use a uh, control space, and it does, the system picks up that there's an attribute available. And so if, as the JSP developer were typing this out, not only would it discover the name of the tag, but it would also discover that an attribute is available. And just as we've seen in using Eclipse with standard tag libraries, it's picking up my custom tag. So if you imagine that you're the JSP developer and you're using your JSP tooling, in this case Eclipse, the tooling's actually picking up what's going on in the configuration of custom tags. So we're beginning to extend just the basic and very powerful functionality of the JSP environment. So as tradition, we should, of course, um, since this is our first tag, we should make our tag say, hello world. And so the JSP developer is using a JSP tag like they're normally used to using other JSP tags, such as, uh, well, title is really an HTML tag, but uh, for each tag. For each tag is a JSTL tag. Notice the syntax is very similar, so the JSP developer should feel um, comfortable using our uh, custom tag in the same environment that they use other tags. Okay. So let's run it again, do our sanity check, make sure that we've provided additional functionality in our very simple tag, okay? So we're going to run again, we're going to run the list employees servlet, which calls our list employees JSP, run as run on server. And what we expect to happen is that it has to rebuild, but the server should not have to restart. If we have caching issues on the browser, we can just hit the request again. Uh, to try and refresh it. Uh, notice that the attribute still has default value. It doesn't have the attribute value that we passed in. So if I click refresh, et voila, we see that the attribute value has actually changed. So there we would have a browser refresh issue, but the JSP developer was allowed to set a value for that attribute.
what we did here is we created a custom tag yes granted a very simple custom tag we made sure that um, we have the TLD file the tag library descriptor in place in the right place as a Java developer we extended the appropriate interfaces in our tag class implemented the appropriate uh, methods in our tag class and then our JSP developer just like they would use any other tag library can begin using our custom tags